Good morning and welcome to Collaborative Statistics. Um, today we'll be looking at Chapter 11, the Chi-Square Distribution. Now this one is a little different from the ones the... We're still going to be doing hypothesis testing, but this is different from the previous ones where we looked at means and proportions and the standard deviations and looked to see are they equal to each other. This is one where we're going to be looking at um, uh, with the tables. We'll be looking at, I can't think of, uh, contingency tables, thank you, and it just came to me. Um, and we are going to look to see does the numbers that we have fit the distribution, so the goodness of fit test. Uh, are the two or three uh, rows of data independent of each other? Uh, we're also going to test uh, homogeneity. Um, we'll see that one as well as uh, testing variances. Okay. Now this x here is chi. This is the Greek letter chi, um, and so chi squared. We are squaring this um, because if we didn't, we would uh, find out the values are zero. So because we're going to have positives and negatives, um, we're going to. This is how we're going to have it, write it, chi square follows the chi-square with degrees of freedom, and we had to put down the degrees of freedom. Um, the degrees of freedom, mu is equal to the degrees of freedom, and the standard deviation of chi-square is the square root of two times the degrees of freedom that we have, or twice the mean. So those are little bits of information about what the chi-square square distribution looks like. Uh, here's some more. It's not symmetrical. It is skewed to the right. Uh, every curve um, every chi-square curve is different at every degrees of freedom, so every one is a little different. Um, similar to the t distribution, it, it where the t distribution keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, um, or you know closer to the normal. This one also is different at every degrees of freedom. Um, the test statistic is always greater than or equal to zero. The mean is located just to the right of the peak because again we know it's skewed so that makes sense and the hypothesis tests are almost always right tail tests so they're single t right tail we're always looking to see is it greater than okay because if it's zero then we you know, we're always looking to make sure that it's greater than zero so here our goodness of fit hypothesis test this is the first one the GOF Okay, we are looking to see does the data that we have fit a probability distribution that we've been told. Okay, so they're going to give you a probability distribution and then they're going to give you a list of data and you're going to look to see does that make sense. So sometimes it's are they evenly distribu distributed. You know, other times it will be, you know, they'll give you points and say this is these are the things that show up. Um, now let's look at a town. So this is the number of uh, how, uh, the distribution of TVs. Okay, is you know, uh, six percent have no TV uh, nationally. Uh, Ten percent have one TV. You know, twenty-four percent have two TVs, and uh, that's forty. And sixty percent have three or more TVs. And then they're going to go look at a town and say, here's what we found when we surveyed this town for how many TVs they had. Does this town fit the national distribution? <coughs> okay. So the null hypothesis is that the population fits the given distribution, so we're no longer just writing a number. We're not saying those things because we don't have a number to fit. We're having a distribution, so it fits the distribution or it doesn't fit the distribution. Okay, and if this will, bar will go away, uh, the expected value for every um, uh, part of the table has to be greater than five. Okay, there it goes. And for every cell, has to exceed five. Oops, I didn't talk about the the formula. Um, wasn't thinking. So here we have the degrees of freedom. Okay, the chi distribution is equal to the sum of every event for every square, the observed minus our expected squared divided by the expected. So we're finding the probabilities of each of these things, and the degrees of freedom is k minus one. Right. Um, so for how many things do we have? How many different distribution pieces of the distribution do we have? Subtract one. Okay. Um, so we're going to be seeing this O minus E, and the reason we have to square this is some are going to be less and some are going to be more. And if we added all those up, we'd find out that we get zero. Alright, so that's why we square them to make these all positive. Okay. 
So we do this for every single uh, piece of the distribution. All right. For the next one, the test of independence. All right. Notice it's very similar. The the um, formula is very similar here. We have the observed minus the expected squared over the expected, but we have this I day. So we have to do this for. We're going to have more um, call, more rows and columns in our uh, um, contingency table, and so therefore we're, that's why we're doing it. That's why it's not just K. It's not just one list. We have you know we'll have groups so we'll have you know a three by three table and so we'll have to find out we'll have nine pieces that we have to figure out all right and the degrees of freedom are we subtract off how many rows we have and how many columns we have subtract one from each of the, from the number of rows and subtract one from the number of columns and then multiply them together okay um, and if they're independent our null hypothesis the two variables are independent the alternative is that they are not uh, that they are dependent or not independent Okay, so those are the things we're going to be looking at. Again, each cell needs to be at least five. Okay, so this is very similar to the one before because um, we only had, you know, the expected value and the observed values. So for our distribution, so it kind of fits into this. We could have used this degrees of freedom as well. They just try to make it simple. Um, but that's what we're looking at. Are these independent of each other? So you're going to see a contingency table. The first one was, does it fit the distribution? Are they the same distribution? Or close enough to be the same distribution? Um, whereas this one, we're going to look to see, we're going to have a list. And so this could be a big table. You know, you can have a, a five by seven table where all the different groups and are the pieces independent of each other, okay, or not. And so that's what you're testing in this for the chi-squared. The next one is homogeneity. We're going to have two populations with unknown distributions, it says here, and we want to know are they the same. Again, we're going to have a list of columns. All right. We're going to have observed and expected, squared over <laughs> the expected. Oh, it looks very familiar, doesn't it? And multiply our degrees of freedom, you know, number of columns minus one times number of rows minus one. And do these two populations follow the same distribution or they do not? So that that's our null and alternatives. These are going to stay fairly similar. Um, and again, the cells need to have at least five in each cell. Okay, the expected value has to be at least five. Okay, not necessarily the observed, but the expected value has to be at least five in every one of these cases. Um, the last test that we run with a chi-square is variance. So this allows us to test are standard deviations the same, okay? Because if the standard deviations are the same, the variances are the same. So we square, remember variance is just the square of the standard deviation, okay? We haven't used variance at all really throughout this entire semester up until this point. You know, we've been told how to calculate it. Uh, we see that, you know, sigma, we saw it was the square root of the variance when we did all the stuff uh, at the beginning of the semester in chapter two. But now we can actually test are these variances are the same. And so we have our chi-square is the um, uh, sample. We're looking at samples. So we have our n minus one times the sample squared. Divi sample deviation squared divided by the population standard deviation squared, okay, and our degrees of freedom again are n minus one. This is the only one where we can have left, right, or two-tailed, okay, because we're looking to see are they equal to each other, is less than or is it greater than, okay? These uh, no, no, notice here we have our null and hypothesis are different from all the rest of the chi-squared ones. Okay, but more similar to the hypothesis tests we did in the last two chapters, where we had a value and said, okay, is the variance equal to some value? And they're going to give you, if they give you a value, of the, if they say standard deviation, we have to square it. Okay, so that, because usually we've been given the populate sample standard deviations. So we want to check, we want to square those because we're going to be comparing variances. Okay, and so, and then again, is the variance less than, greater than, or not equal to the value squared. Okay, so um, we can, we're going to see some of these in the book, and I'll go over them. But this is the these are the the main ideas in the, this chapter. So um, I hope this was helpful, and I will see you on Saturday.